All right, hey everyone. In this video, I'm gonna show you how we can use this Roto Brush tool to create some decent transitions. So in this clip, Omen gets a kill, and then he does his ultimate to teleport to another location. What I'm gonna use is the Roto Brush tool to bring in his ultimate, have his arms come in earlier to start the transition earlier so I can kind of pick my timing. So let's find right where the hands come in. And you can use this for anything. A lot of the times I'll use it for a gun coming in somewhere you have a current clip going on and the gun comes up or anything can kind of really be masked in. So we see this is the clip or this is the shot right before it comes in. So let me just duplicate this control D and go control shift D and delete the first half. So now I got to choose where I want it to start coming in. So he gets a kill right there and let's just pretend there was music and I'm syncing to it. So I want the hands to come in right away here. So I'm using page up to move frame by frame. So now all we need to do, we just find where I want it to be completed. Kind of like right before the map shows up probably. I do control duplicate again. And the top one I'm gonna bring over like this. So I'm gonna play with a few things here. You can make it cleaner, but I'm just gonna quickly go through this. You double click on, so let's go one frame over so it actually does start coming in here. I'm gonna double click on the layer. And now I'm just gonna start zooming in. So I'm scrolling in here, hold spacebar to bring up this hand and then bring it around. If you press spacebar, it's gonna play kind of like what I did there, but if you hold it, I can bring it around. I click my rotor brush tool. I'm gonna select just this. So now it just has that. Now if you go up one frame, you're gonna have to make adjustments. It's kind of like the Photoshop one. So holding alt will create a minus and regular is just green. So adding and minusing or subtracting, I should say. So now that side's fine, but I know a second hand comes in. I guess not yet. So we don't see a second hand come in yet. And a lot of people will just click play and let's see how it does on its like auto doing it. But I'm just gonna go one frame at a time and really just make some adjustments. Once it's all on the screen, it'll be fine, but because it's kind of flying in here, there's gonna be some issues. So let me just go through this. So I'm highlighting. I mean, it's really got a nice contrast, the black to that. So it's gonna be easy for the rotor brush to grab this. So see, I grabbed everything. There's some issues with the gray, so I'll just hold Alt and minus that. Something like this as well. I don't know why that stayed there, but whatever, you just gotta clean it up. And I see the other hand doesn't come in yet, so let's go page down and just keep adjusting it frame by frame. You'll see there's kind of like mini keyframes here. If I can zoom in, you can see what I've done already here. So let's just add all of this. Should we get the whole hand? Again, just minusing out parts you don't need. I might go a little faster through this just to show you. Now, if you ever go over a little like that, it's not a big deal. Just hold Alt and just minus that out. I'm gonna have to do it a few times just to get it exactly. See, sometimes it's a little iffy. I gotta actually go in there and get it exact. But this is so much faster than actually masking it out myself or doing the rotoscope, I should say. So you can see this one here, it was all fine until the corner. So just add that. And that hand's already all on screen. So it should be nice and straightforward. I will check every frame. You see this hand because it's still coming on screen is uh, having some issues figuring out why it went from like one little line to a bunch. But that's okay, we forgive the computer for now. Again, just doing adjustments frame by frame. Usually they're subtle, just to get it perfect. Next frame, look at that, it's almost perfect on its own. So I'm gonna keep going frame by frame until I get to my mark down here, because that's where I want everything to show up. And look at that, it's doing it fine on its own. I haven't changed anything in the last few frames. It's got enough info to know what I'm looking for here. And I don't have to make any adjustments, which is nice. Once you're done, you got enough here. Actually, just gonna go delete this chunk here. Go back to this one and hit freeze, and I'm gonna let it freeze those exact spots. I should have zoomed out so you could see a little better, but you can see everything else is black and white. I mean, his hands are black, but really what you have selected would be in color, and it's coming in here. You can see it's not perfect. You could. Go on the side and change the feather amount. Right now it's at five. If depending on how bad the mask is, you could go up a little bit more. But remember, we're gonna play with some blur on the bottom layer and we're gonna try to make it smooth. So now that we're done with the layer, I'm gonna click V to go back to my arrow tool and I'm gonna click footage 
or at least up here to go back to my composition. And you can see, stop it. Oh, this is, sorry, this is my composition. I was clicked on the, foot, the wrong one. If I play it, the hands come in and the effect goes. So, I mean, obviously that's not that clean. If anything, it's a little awkward. So we're gonna play with a few things here. Let's put the hands on the top. Just need all this. And the first thing I'm going to do is have it look like we're focusing on the background then we focus to the foreground. So I'm going to have camera motion blur, or sorry, camera lens blur. So camera lens blur, we're gonna flap it on the hands. I'm gonna go repeat edge pixels. I'm gonna turn it to zero for now. And I'm gonna bring it down onto the bottom layer. Do the same thing, repeat edge pixels and put it to zero. Now let's go at the very beginning here and let's actually put the hands to five. So even though that's what it was before, you could have left it, I guess. Let's go a few frames in. Something like this, so the hands are out of focus. And now I'm gonna add a keyframe for my hands, the blur, and for the bottom layer of the blur. So if I press U and I press U, which brings up all my keyframes, you can see there's two right here. Top layer for the hands at five and the bottom layer at zero. I'm gonna go shift page down, which goes 10 frames over. What I'm gonna do is have the hands go to zero, so they're in focus, and the background go to say six. So the background goes out of focus. It's kind of an issue because you can see how the mask isn't perfect there, so we're actually gonna make the background only go to three. Should help a little bit with the moving. Let's, let's render it out really fast here, see how it looks. We can see the hands do come in. I'm actually gonna make the hands a little more out of focus at the beginning, so I'm gonna put them to eight. What I'm going to do is grab the full layer, so it doesn't have any masking, bring it over around here, and we could just do a fade. So I could just have, let's say, right when it comes full focus. So zero on transparency up to 100. You could do something like this. That way the hands come in first, let it, let it render and we'll see. So this way the hands come in and then transitions to this next thing. And you could have it further, like I'm doing this transition into him doing the ability. I could really have it mask in right here, probably would have been better have it come in, then mask out. But you get the idea with it here. I mean, I really, really should have done it with these these hands coming in, not bringing up the map. It makes it a lot smoother because then he could just be, you know, right into the transition. But that's fine. It's the same idea. Another way you could play with Say duplicate this, get rid of that chunk. And this one here, we're going to have it at add. So it gets a little bit more of a glow. I can hit the transition, or sorry, the opacity down at the bottom one here. Let's say part way in, bring that to zero. It's a little fast, but the idea is there. I've done this in a montage before. I'll show you an example. A lot of people have done this in montages. Again, I like it the most when a gun is coming up or with some kind of crazy hand transition coming in like this. So one last time, probably should have used this transition because his hands are already on screen and not entering screen because entering screen makes it easier to mo look more realistic. I would have this where each hand would be individual and I would have them slide from here up and from there up at the same time. So it kind of comes into frame and then does this transition and you could fade it in there. But yeah, that's just a simple example of how you can use this roto brush tool for your montages. It saves you a lot of time rather than rotoscoping and masking everything. I personally do enjoy masking and rotoscoping a lot of things, but in a scenario like this where his hands are very dark compared to the background, like it really pops, I might as well use this tool because it saves me time. It's faster, it's easier, and that's always what you want in editing. So thanks guys, can't wait to see what you guys make using the roto brush tool and masking transitions. Have a good one.